<laughs> My loyal soldiers of the game is dead. You have assembled here in formation today, for we are about to embark upon the greatest trial of our lives. It has been deemed by the Master of Law that we are to march and wage war upon those ignorant of our ways. We shall spread our message of peace, intelligence, study, and knowledge by force of arms. It has been decreed by the Master of Law that we shall do these things, and it has been ordained and deemed right and fit by all the gods in the heavens above. We will do this thing because it is right. Now I know what many of you are thinking. The enemy too prays up to their heathen gods, and what's to happen if their heathen gods bless them? Well, I'm here to reassure you. Such blessings will falter in the face of our combined arms and the blessings of our own righteous and true gods beside us. We shall fight them on the beaches, on the land, in the air, as you are flung from catapults. You will meet them head on, dive upon them, for I know you all to be brave souls that down to the last man, woman, and many of you children back there. Yes. You shall be rewarded well for your bravery. There will be medals, ribbons, pay raises as long as you go out and commit murder upon the enemy. Yes, the glories will be many and they will be great, for the Master of Law will be watching you from on high upon his pulpit behind the... Oh, oh, I just realized we are totally screwed. Anyways. With that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I, I wanted to have fun there, but I had nothing in the script at all for this. It just seemed like a great spur of the moment idea. I apologize for that, but welcome back down here to the Gamer's Dead. I am your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire and failing comedian. I can't do the stream of consciousness thing very well, but... With that aside, we are continuing on with our look at the war campaign settings. And in particular, I wanted to take a look today at the many, many, many different sorts of activities that you can throw down for your players to engage with and possibly, uh, if they successfully pull it off, have a greater impact on any of the fights or campaigns or wars that they are currently involved in. And along with a couple of other little intricacies and things that come up with it, but in addition to that, we also want to talk about how you're going to reward the players because while they are in a military, uh, soldiers, uh, depending, it, again, depending on the setting that you have going and even the game that you're running, but typically you want to get, bestow some kind of award on the players even if they are in a formal military styled setting. Uh, soldiers get hazard pay in the modern day and age on top of uh, uh, whatever their current rank affords them as far as uh, their, uh, their wages. So these things will apply. And also we're playing in a game, so there's nothing wrong with bumping it up just a little bit. Uh, even if you're going for something a little bit more realistic, just uh, handing down something really cool to the players will be useful. But first, we want to take uh, we want to take a look at what it is that will uh, um, the players will be doing and some different ideas for you to throw down within the flow charts that you use to plot out the general course of the battle. Uh, no plan ever survives contact with the enemy and your plans will very rarely survive contact with the players. Be ready for them to completely jump and skip several sections of your flow chart, but even still, Having that chart will still give you an idea of some things that should be happening or could happen. It just depends on the context of what exactly has happened. Now, starting us off with the other tasks you can throw down for your players. First off, they're not really questing in this instance. Uh, they're not, in this style of setting, it's not so much about some grand quest or this great idea, this crusade. Well... It could be a crusade they're on, but even still, it is a more formal military setting. Even if they're part of some sort of ad hoc uh, scratch unit or an auxiliary unit, they are still going to be handed down objectives. There's a chain of command to be followed, typically, in these sorts of settings. And so it's going to be more missions, different missions and objectives that they're going to be focusing on. Now, 
objectives just depend on what exactly you have planned out you know storm the castle kill the king capture the king um or queen uh, whatever else there but specifically the missions the broader general well adventure that they are on you could have plenty of different things i've listed some here for you you can have them go out and as grim as it is it is war you can have them poison food and water supplies or go out and sabotage the enemy's equipment or stealing and destroy or destroying the supplies because well be ashamed to waste all of that wouldn't it why not just bring it back and supply your own side better at the enemy's expense absolutely incredibly useful to have and, you, and then you destroy whatever you can't bring back with you uh, they can also ambush patrols or take care of scouting parties because well the less information that the enemy is able to gather the bigger the advantage that they can maintain for their own forces now uh, they can also perform the said scouting duties and obviously scouting has a degree of uh, danger to it they're further ahead of friendly lines and forces that may be able to help them or might have been able to help them otherwise so they are definitely exposed and vulnerable to these uh, previously mentioned ambushes but the information they gather can do a lot to feed into their commander's uh, tactical and strategic planning and really begin to affect the outcome of the war or battle before it's even had a chance to start. Uh, they can also go out to bribe key personnel or if they can't bribe them or if that's just not... Uh, expedient enough for their own commanders or rulers they can go out and assassinate key personnel disrupt the chain of command by taking out the enemy commander or the captains colonels or lieutenants that are underneath the uh well anybody to just really disrupt the uh that chain of command and uh, cause the enemy force to lose that unit cohesion and uh that coordination that might have otherwise been had on top of this, you have really important targets like uh, in your fantasy settings, prominent clerics, uh, mages, even bards uh, and the like, or just champion warriors that might be a key part of uh, the enemy's morale, their ability to support their units. Taking these kinds of personnel out will, one, be hugely important for the player, the forces the players represent, but also... Uh, serve as a rewarding challenge because you know taking these people out if they're not doing it directly in combat they're going to more than likely be doing this uh via means of stealth and subterfuge and so you have a number of ways that you can present these options to players and give them uh options on how they go about carrying out these tasks in particular if they're serving in more of a uh, uh a non traditional soldier role say they're an advanced scouting force or they're uh, some sort of special forces operations kind of unit and this applies equally well in sci-fi settings as well um take star wars for example as particular the star wars animated series uh, on the clone wars the uh, the separatists use numerous tactical droids in command situations uh, these tactical droids would be prime targets to take out i'm sure they're constantly outfought and outwitted by the jedi leading the various clone troopers but even still the jedi are so few and spread so far that they're not going to be able to command and lead every single army so having an elite unit go over to take care of their of the enemy's tactical units their command units and even the flesh and blood generals and admirals that the separatists have would be hugely invaluable uh, definitely an indispensable tool to be made use of a great unit to have so again opportunities abound here for no matter the setting for all of these uh in the list here so far uh, just as important they can steal or gather intel on enemy plans i say steal or gather intel just because stealing is not always the most ideal like say uh say the plans are on something analog a map a booklet uh they're not digitally recorded or they're not in a setting where it's possible to have something digitally recorded stealing the maps and plans will be a dead giveaway that something has gone awry and thus the enemy will reformulate their plans on the basis of well they don't want to be caught entirely off guard uh, they don't want to be 
outflanked and outmaneuvered, so they are going to redistribute, reorganize their forces, possibly even move their position and change up the uh, their arrangements of defenses or battle plans for the uh, coming battle. So gathering the intel, copying it down, writing it down, or just outright memorizing it will be incredibly useful. But that just depends. And then one of my favorite options, and it's probably one of the most dangerous, rear guard. Taking up the rear guard, defending the main body of the force against pursuing enemy forces, highly massively dangerous because, well, the rear guard is going to be dealing with the enemy vanguard uh, or whatever other pursuit forces they may have, and they're going to be hit, facing an overwhelming number of the enemy. There's a pretty decent chance they're going to die. But if they manage to survive it, well, the prestige from that, that's great. And not only that, but it's a very hazardous task, even in uh, uh, historical settings. You know, uh, soldiers that took up the uh, rear guard or defensive positions to cover the retreat of the army would be fairly well paid and rewarded for their servants and efforts, um, even in the events of their death. Well, depending on the commanders, uh, the generals or people in charge, that pay could go on to their families if they sadly don't live to see <laughs> see the paycheck come in. But point being, it's definitely a tense, exciting moment, and the players are just having to deal with wave after wave of enemies. And again, the the possibilities, depending on the setting and the game that you're playing, provide for just an incredible amount of... Uh, well, utility with this kind of an idea. And it's something I definitely recommend you make use of. There's nothing like a great rear guard action, whether the players are covering a massive retreat or the routing enemy or routing allied forces, or if it's just a tactical withdrawal and the enemy commanders are seizing on this withdrawal, having the players buy time while the uh, rest of the units get into ambush position or make it across a strong point that they can hold more easily absolutely essential for so many different strategic uh, strategic plans. But now we have to figure out how do we go about rewarding players in this kind of a setting, in this kind of a situation, because you can't just heap on piles of gold to them, not, not, not at the end of every adventure. It doesn't quite work that way if you're in a more formalized military setting versus, you know, an adventuring group going off to investigate some lost derelict ship floating out through the uh, through an asteroid uh, field in space or delving deep into this ancient cavern where a dragon has taken roost and has gathered about its hoard. The, the, the players aren't going to get to keep that kind of a reward. If they recover something like that, it's going to be taken in by the commanders and possibly, well, going to be sent back to the capital or their kingdom or, you know, maybe best case scenario, be distributed as a reward amongst various commanders, sub-commanders, and the wealth, you know, gets rewarded and passed on down through the rest of the military. It just kind of depends a little bit on the quality of the commanders in charge. And if they're smart, they're going to make sure their troops are well paid and well rewarded. Um, but not overly so. There has to be a balance with that sort of thing. And I'm starting to dig into my Sun Tzu a little bit here. I apologize. We are going to move on. Point being, they're not going to get heaps and heaps of incredible rewards at the end of every mission. They're doing their duty, something they're already being paid for and expected to do by the rest of that chain of command and their fellow soldiers. So how do we get the rewards to them? Well, in many, many different kinds of wartime settings, uh, excluding-ish sort of the modern age. It just depends on how loose the morals may be in the face of the modern day and age, but spoils of war. Looting their enemies, uh, such as possible assassination targets, they can absolutely do this. It's uh, they're an elite, a more elite force. They're sent behind enemy lines. They make their kill. They can start taking up some of the extra valuables and pocketing them. There's nobody else really around to stop them aside from each other. And when they get back, you know, they don't have to tell anybody about the loot that they took. Uh, stealing the coffers and treasury of enemy targets. And if they're assassinating the enemy general, uh, depending again on the setting, there may be some sort of war chest available with... Uh, coffers of loot that they can use as re incidental rewards for those soldiers or units that perform exceptionally well taking that well 
the army starts to lose incentive quite a bit if there's not available immediate pay or as uh, ready a reward available for them for doing well. Uh, you take a look at history, uh, an army that's not paid is not going to do very well. They're going to turn on you at some point. I mean, you take a look at uh, the end of the Fu First Punic War, Carthage fought its wars by hiring mercenaries because they were largely a mercantile-based city. Merchants and men of wealth and uh, who owned businesses and these far-flung trading fleets, that's how they brought in their coin, but there wasn't really a whole lot of military service. There was some, but they had to supplement this, and they supplemented it by hiring mercenaries. And uh, um, uh, at, at the end of the Punic War, they couldn't pay the, smer the mercenary armies because, well, they lost, so Rome slapped them with war reparations. The cost of the war, especially the cost of losing the war, was just devastating. And because of the war, they couldn't trade as well or readily, so their, their, their coffers were a bit dry. They didn't have the coin available to pay the mercenaries. So the mercenaries got pissed and besieged the city, and they had to send their general out, again, hiring more mercenaries. Who, and he paid them up front and uh, basically had to put his, the old armies down using the new mercenary forces. So definitely want to make sure you're able to pay your soldiers. And if the players steal the loot that's meant to pay for the soldiers, well, that's a massive blow to enemy, uh, to enemy morale. The players may not be able to keep all of that, but they can certainly keep a, reasonably keep and withhold a decent chunk for themselves if they so choose. Also... Uh, if they don't, uh, even if they do do that, bringing back the uh, trove of treasure to uh, to supplement their own army and send back to the kingdom, the general may be like, oh, God damn, good job, guys, here, bonus, and hand out little chests of reward to them as well, you know, an extra added bonus and boost to that income. Then there's also sacking towns and cities. Uh, when medieval armies marched through towns across Europe uh, through the through the uh, cities and towns of the Middle East, all through Russia, everywhere. When the army would burst through victoriously and start raiding, pillaging, and looting, well, they grabbed everything and everything that they could, really, and the uh, the rewards would be absolutely incredible. Even the Mongol Empire, uh, uh, after Gen Genghis Khan reformed it and uh, focused his army's efforts on completely routing and dispatching the enemy forces or capturing them then went to the task of looting things the rewards just piled up and that got distributed amongst the soldiers as well so this is also an additional way for you to be able to reward players and same idea with looting gear depots uh, any supply caches that the enemy may have the players can again reasonably expect to keep a couple of things out of that if they're bringing the bulk of supplies back you know that a bunch of that will get distributed and sent back through the army uh, through the rest of the armed forces but even if they destroy it or bring it back they can still keep a couple of things out of that and ideally you should let them just because well, it's just kind of cool i mean uh as an example of how how demoralizing it can be for your own players when you don't do that a cousin a couple of cousins of mine were playing um we're playing a, a game set in the Warhammer 40k universe. It was the the Death Watch. Uh, they're playing Space Marines seconded from various chapters all across the Imperium of Mankind to the Death Watch. And they're, for those of you that don't know, the Death Watch keeps an eye out for all Xenos. Uh, they keep an eye and engage uh, a, the various alien species that pose an incredible hostile threat to the rest of humanity at large. And they do the best they can to put them down before the threat can really truly mount. Or if it has mounted, they're right there at the forefront, acting as the uh, the tip of the spear for the Imperium and dealing as much damage as they can. Ideally, the decapitating strike. Well, they would loot all kinds of war gear, different uh, suits of power armor or breastplates for power armor. Uh, various bolters, uh, chain swords, power weapons, all sorts of incredible gear, legendary gear that was inscrolled in 
very fine, minute detail, almost microscopic detail, the names and deeds of the various other space marines that had wielded these legendary weapons, thought lost to the ravages of time and the predations of the alien, the mutant, and the heretic. They recover these things, and they they would do their duty uh, more often than not and return many of these items to the various reliquaries either to be stored within the death watch or sent back to the various uh, space marine chapters that this gear may have once belonged to in order for the death watch to maintain and keep their curried favor with the different chap uh, supporting chapters but they were their uh, storyteller their dm essentially demanded every time they found something cool they handed over. They didn't get to keep any of this really awesome stuff. They didn't get to keep any of this gear or they didn't uh, have any gear exchanged back to them as a reward. Nothing that they could use and wield to add their own names and deeds to these various weapons and their long legacies of it. 10,000 years in some cases of service to the Imperium of Man. And it was incredibly frustrating for them. They vented quite a bit after I don't know, the 8th or 10th uh, mission that they had gone through and you know they found this legendary po uh, power hammer uh, the uh, uh, power weapons generate a for a a force field essentially that uh, splits things at the atomic level so incredibly powerful weaponry generate quite a bit of killing power really cool stuff just all the way around and they didn't get to keep any of it or they weren't rewarded with anything in kind later after handing over this gear that was lost this ancient in many cases irreplaceable uh unreplicatable gear that just eh, you you get the point you have to reward your players at some point even if sometimes depending on the setting it just doesn't quite make sense you got to give them something in order to uh, keep them motivated and you know as everybody wants to wield this uh wield this incredible gear using the uh using the shield uh, of the uh, high paladin lord lothar or wielding his great maul against the orcs in the world of azeroth uh, they want to have this cool legacy, wielding these different items that have such an entrenched history within the various worlds that they play in. Or even if it's not something with that particular kind of a setting, if you're playing in Shadowrun where gear is essentially disposable to a, to a large extent, you still on occasion want to give them something really cool. Just something really awesome that they can make use of. And, well, you can't enchant anything kind of can't enchant anything in Shadowrun for everybody to use, but you get the idea. Give them something to keep them enticed and motivated to keep moving forwards. But then we also have the stable pay and bonuses that they can get, and I talked about bonuses a little bit already, but the players are in the military. They're in a formal military setting. They're going to be receiving a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly wage, a consistent income that they can expect on a regular basis. And as they move up in rank, that pay will increase, and that should be reflected. Um, it may not be something that always has to be kept, kept track of by your players, but you should kind of keep track of it a little bit for them, because... If they're building up this pay and not really thinking about it, then, you know, just kind of keep track of how many months they've been in service. And uh, that way, if they, if the war ends, the battle ends, and they leave the military, hey, this is what, this is the pay you've accrued over time here. And also, promotions in and of themselves are going to be a reward as well. Uh, there's nothing like moving up in rank, gaining a bit of authority. Not only gaining authority, but if the players are actually earning their way up through the ranks, ostensibly they should be earning the respect and admiration of the soldiers around them because they are playing heroic characters. These are people whose deeds are going to be sung by the bards for ages and centuries down the line. Uh, these are people whose actions throughout space are uh, uh, throughout the empire that are going to be extolled and their virtues sung f through every single holovid, through every single uh, depiction and tritio taken of them. It's all going to be recorded and related, generally, generally. If they're sneak thieving assassins that all their deeds are done in the dark, there's no names, no nothing, then it's going to be quietly 
acknowledged by the people handing out these tasks. But again, you get the idea. There are going to be ribbons, medals, and pay raises associated with being in a more formal military setting. And then you have bounties. Anytime there's trouble that the regular army ha is struggling to deal with, it's not uncommon uh, to have the general, colonel, or whatever lord or commander start handing out bounties or posting bounties that the players could potentially claim, especially if they have any off time for themselves. They get together with a couple of buddies and they head out to go take care of the problem. Well, that's an, again, an opportunity for the players to be rewarded. And in this case, it makes a certain amount of sense um, for the players to get a, a larger than usual uh, amount of gold handed down to them in such a more uh, official setting as they're dealing with a unique problem that the regular military either doesn't have time for or doesn't quite know how to deal with um, or is an, any other number of reasons why they haven't gotten to it or dealt with it themselves and you know unique magical threats or ancient technologies being awoken uh, these are all great opportunities and things that you can throw at them and also it's different little side adventures to uh, you, that you can put in place to give players a break from the regular military campaigning. You can give them a more classical adventure sort of thing to, to go and do. It's not it doesn't necessarily have to be tied with the story at hand, but it can be. It absolutely can be. It just, again, depends on what exactly you want to have planned out. But, you know, again, that just all depends on you. But these are just a number of ways to reward your players and a small number of different kinds of tasks that can be given for the players. Various little missions that you can incorporate within these various flowcharts or whatever sort of plan of battle you have lined out that the players can take part in. And this helps to make them feel like they are having a greater impact on the battle at large through their successes and their failures. And then the rewards to come along with it can also serve to help just ingratiate them and ingrain them and set them further into the setting and story you have laid out for them. But that's just, again, a few thoughts and my own opinions on the matter and some different things that I have made use of. I'd certainly no love to know what you think, so if you have your own tips, tricks, or ideas, drop them down in the comments below. Or if you have feedback for me, absolutely, please let me know. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments. I'd love to read your different ideas. As we're all only going to improve our abilities as players and storytellers by sharing all this information and just really... Uh, Oh, I lost my train of thought there, but you get the idea. But with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all for your time. You guys have yourselves a good night.